That's the issue. <coughs> yeah, yeah. We, we can do a bracadabra and just change the topic now. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So stand by. We're going on in just a few. Two seconds. And welcome to Debate 4 on 1. Thank you so very much for making time for the program yet again. My name as always is Eugene Anangwe. Today on the program, we're talking about a very critical issue. Last week, we were just looking at the issue of African problems being given African solutions. But today, we're putting on the spot Africa's elite. And the question we're asking ourselves on the program today, what role are they playing to help the continent grow? Are they really taking a backseat on Africa's issues and problems? Or their work is just to sit on the fence and complain on the sidelines? These are some of the things we'll be looking at right here on the program. Who best to help us understand this even more? Let me now introduce our panelists on the program for the very first time on Debate 4 and 1. We're very honored to have you. Madam Louise Mushikiwawa, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Welcome. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us. Of course, Shaka Kanuma is making another return on the program. Shaka of The Focus, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having on me. On the other end, we have Thierry Gatete, a blogger and a human rights lawyer. Thank you for joining us once again. Thank you. Moses Gahigi, for the very first time on Debate yes. 4 and 1, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Right. So this issue of the African elites, mm -hmm. and of course, many people have had their own different definitions of what <laughs> elite means and of course, how they can put it into context. But we're looking at... Africa's top cream, Africa's most educated, Africa's most richest, Africa's most informed, and their role in shaping Africa's growth and giving solutions to them. Let's start with you, Madam Mushikiwabo. In your opinion, do you feel that this group of people, creme de la creme of Africa, are they playing their role really to help Africa find its sol problems to, the, to solutions? Uh, let me f first of all say that um you know, before we get to the African elite mm -hmm. and the best exposed and best educated, um, we should not forget that Africa is not that small percentage of Africans who speak multiple languages, who've been all over the world or all over the continent. So 
we should take into account what uh, role the African elite is playing. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot of wisdom in our villages. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of uh, progressive, uh, smart ideas coming mm -hmm. from, from uh, the ordinary Africans. If, uh, like me, mm -hmm. uh, you travel across the continent, you would be amazed good things coming out of uh, the most unexpected places. Mm -hmm. so, so that's one. Now to the point, uh, do African elites actually uh, support uh, what Africa should be, which is you know, the right um, and objective picture of the continent? Uh, do they sit on the sidelines <coughs> and point out to what's not working? Mm -hmm. Um, let me not generalize, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there, is, there is failure, uh, to be very honest, with the African elites to contribute to that depiction of Africa, to, to get our hands dirty, mm -hmm. and to fix some of these problems, mm -hmm. unless we don't feel the responsibility. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, they end up just criticizing and not giving pr probably solutions to those particular problems. You know, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, the world is very dysfunctional in, in many ways, and, and you are in the media, so y you know uh, what I'm talking about. Um, and of course, my views are very much informed uh, by who I am, which is I am, I am, uh, I am a Rwandese citizen. Uh, I am also uh, perhaps one of those Africans who were educated away from the continent and stayed for so many years and came back home and you know looking at all these sides um, so when it comes to Rwanda and I think this applies to Africa the, the first question is do we feel the responsibility mm -hmm. to to change what we think is not working I think that's really the first question some people would say my job is not to change my country my job is to um, live my life, uh, do my job, get paid, uh, take care of my family, and you and know when things life. are not working, yes. you know I'm free to say that. And that's the job of the government to Absolutely. fix things. Absolutely. Let's bring in Shaka Kanuma here because the Honourable Minister says that to some large extent there's been a failure. Even the elite, those who feel that they know it all, those who feel that they have the best education, to pick and say this is what we need to do for our continent. So change the image that is out there. Do you feel? Do you share the same thoughts? Well, I, I think I'm, I'm somewhere in between. Um, there are those African elites who indeed haven't been way up there in, in being interactive, in being um, working with others to try to alleviate uh, the appalling image and the appalling situations on the ground. But we also have to be fair, there are people who come in, these are people who have been educated, there are people who have been born in the diaspora and they go to African countries and the dysfunction that is there, uh, the very inability to get anything done, the very idea that you'll try to get uh, someone to do their job on time, to, to do their job without thinking of whose tribe uh, you are coming from, uh, which, what ethnic group you are coming from. People, people's minds are so entrenched with the wrong kind of thinking that even the most well-intentioned African elite might run into a brick wall of, of disappointment and frustration. Not to say that they should stop and, and throw up their hands and say, you know what, I am giving up on these Africans. Mm -hmm. But it's a very real problem. Uh, I'm very glad to say that Rwanda's mindset is already mm -hmm. very advanced in the way of, of, of changing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's Rwanda as a country, when, whenever I leave this country and go visit some of our neighbors and see the level of dysfunction going on there, and I, and I come back, I just become very thankful that the African elite here that is actually very involved in changing things, it comes right from the top. That's how th we get things done in Rwanda. Mm. Now, when that attitude is not coming right from the top, when you don't have that support mechanism coming right from the top, mm. you are going to run into a lot of frustration and you risk very much. Unless you have this kind of superhuman tolerance and superhuman patience, it's very possible to, to become that bad African elite mm. who is going to be criticizing all the time all instead the time. of offering uh, solutions. Gatete, your, your thoughts were that you just don't feel uh, like, you know, 
the African elite, you know, you don't, you don't support this. I mean, you, you feel like w we need to have our own homegrown and homegrown solutions in that particular matter. But the minister and, of course, Shaka here mentioned a very key thing, that, of course, it depends with country specific. And, of course, in Rwanda, for example, our elite, one who's on the top there, really does what he has to do and he does it really well. But the fact that we have some of them who are out there and feel that this is none of their business, they went through what they went through to get where they are, and so they feel it's up to them to reward themselves. Whatever problems Africa is facing, it is not my job. We have a mm. leader there. That's their job. What, right. what do you think uh, about that? And let's not uh, throw flowers on ourselves about that. I don't think that leader gets it easy. I mean, I'm sure he's pulling it. It's, 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 yeah. it's a burden to mm. deal with that elite. But, but see, the African elite is what leads Africa. Uh, the elite, that's what leads the, the society. It's people that... It, pff, by definition, elite means people with the influence mm -hmm. and power. But there's being an elite, that's not the problem. It's being an elitist mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, African elite, to be an elite before you, it was all meant defined from serving. The only reason you could be an elite, you would be an elite because your, your role was to serve your society. Your society would regard you as an elite for that. Mm -hmm. Not to serve yourself, mm -hmm. right? And so African, in, in African elite, you have those two categories. You have African elite who serve, and that's the small minority. And then you have African elitists who create environments where oh, it all comes to themselves. Now, it's not a coincidence that African elite was educated in the West. And the West is a capitalistic concept. Margaret Thatcher once said there's no such thing as a society. There's a, an individual and a household and a family. It was a completely disingenuous regard of the world. But it was to emphasize the concept that it's all about me. Mm -hmm. And everything that s s most of African elites are people who did not strive to achieve it. They were born with it. I, if I said I was elite, it's because I went to school and so on. It's not necessarily because I did it. I was just born in a family that allowed me to go to school. And so what is their place in fixing some of the challenges we see in Africa? No, I think African elite need to be held accountable. Because if they are not led ac uh, held accountable, they tend to be elitist. They tend to create an environment that benefits them. When I wrote this, uh, when, when I talked about this issue of diaspora, I, I got s s so much criticism. But I saw people who came to me and said, I worked hard, I earned my money, I earned the right to eat it the way I want. People come and tell you that. Mm. That's a, apparently an acceptable way of saying things, with no consideration of the environment in which you live. But mm. this stems from the fact that they've been educated in a s value system where money and so on, that defines who you are. It's and not that's what how matters. much useful you are to your society. Yeah. It's how much strong and powerful and shiny you look. And so you're calling for control of this. I think this mind. elite needs to be held accountable. Needs to be held accountable. Mm. Uh, Moses, yes. you feel that those who are elite, those who have it, those who are very smart out there, mm. they are being stopped mm. from actually contributing yeah. to solving some of Africa's problem. Yeah. Could you clarify that? How yeah. is this possible? Yeah, I think, in my opinion, uh, Africa has intellectuals. Mm -hmm. Over the last centuries, we've been developing intellectuals. But I want to look at, at this issue from the perspective of, um, of politics, African politics. Mm -hmm. If you look at the structure of African politics, it's, it's a structure which really does not, you know, it locks out uh, intellectualism. Because African politics, if you, you're really honest about it, you see it's about self-preservation, you know, my regime, how will it, how will it go on to the next level? So, and, in, and, in, and politics, at a certain extent, has seen intellectuals as a threat to their, to their you know, continuity. So you see, uh, in some societies, you can see that there are deliberate uh, efforts. To lock them out. They, to lock them out because they are party spoilers. They are, they are, they are really not, not going to, to, and they are viewed, they are really viewed in a, in a, in a, in a negative manner, b you know, like perspective. They are, they are always, because when you, s when you look at um, politics, you will realize that they're always on the defensive. They're always um, trying to, 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 to advance their, their, their the agendas. Their interests. Yes, and, interest. and, and when, when the intellectuals come in, you, because the space of intellectualism is really critical engagement. 
they will definitely come in that space of critical engagement, which reflection. you feel politicians don't feel like exactly they don't feel comfortable with. Yeah, we have uh, 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 honored to have someone who sits in government, and when you say that they are seen as party spoilers, this is this is what mm. he feels that mm. some governments have locked them out. For, for reasons of advancing their interests because they feel these intellectual people coming in with these ideas, they're just going to spoil our interests. Mm. Do, you, do you agree with that? First of all, let me pick up on what Gatete just said, which I agree with, mm -hmm. that we should not be throwing flowers at ourselves here in Rwanda, mm -hmm. that we're doing better than many others in Africa. We're not. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're doing okay, but we could be doing much, much better. Uh, look at this country. Look at the history of this country. Look at the misunderstandings about this country, in, in not just uh, in the world, but also uh, on the continent. The, the very difficult choices this country had to make, misinterpreted um, uh, the story of this country, largely unwritten. So where are we? Where mm -hmm. is the Rwandan elite? So there is quite a lot of work to do uh, from, from, from our own country here in Rwanda. Now, on the, um, on the very interesting uh, political analysis by uh, uh, Moses, Moses yes. you know, uh, first uh, to, to, to say that um, there are objective, functional, good things happening in many countries in Africa. Mm -hmm. So uh, Africa, yes, we share a lot. But we also have differences I in the way we manage our countries. And th the frustration for me, uh, particularly with the communications background, mm -hmm. is that when one African does something wrong, it's the whole continent. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's also part of your job, you, the African media. Mm -hmm. I know so many exciting, fantastic things happening in, in, in many places on the continent. You, you, you look at a small country, um, a small island, basically no resources, uh, like Cape Verde. How much do we know about Cape Verde that is doing so well, that is well managed, that is uh, an economy surviving basically on good governance and, and fish in the water, and that's about it. It's a fantastic story. Where is that story? Look at the vibrant dialogue um, uh, public dialogue in, in our neighborhood, Kenya. Uh, young Kenyan entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. You sit with them I in a cafe or in a restaurant. It's very edifying. So let me say that we need to begin, and that's the job of the elite, but it's also the job of all of us mm -hmm. by saying, look, before you paint the whole continent with black paint, let's pick out the bright colors uh, that also exist on the continent. Mm -hmm. And this is really critical because if one African does something wrong, there are a hundred Africans doing something right. So, so that balance has, be, has been lacking. And it is the job mm -hmm. of those who are exposed, those who know different systems, those who have access to television like you and me, to actually say that. And tell then, that story. Then we can go to the substance. Mm -hmm. What's not working, what is working, what is hopeless, what can be changed. Now, on, on the uh, very important um, uh, politics of you know, intellectuals I I in Africa, um, we all, as citizens, have a responsibility mm -hmm. to be part of political systems that respond to the needs of our people, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but I do agree also that those who are well-schooled and well-read and uh, know so much are the ones who are going to be uh, critical. I very much liked, um, there was a piece in the New Times here in Kigali a few days ago about the difference between critiquing and criticizing, mm -hmm. you know. S so. There is no perfect system anywhere. Mm -hmm. And there are dysfunctional uh, systems. Mm -hmm. Can we be honest and say, this is not working. This is what I think can be done in this particular context, in this particular country. 
And by saying that, by creating that intellectual debate about it, mm -hmm. I'm contributing to changing it positively, mm -hmm. if I feel it's my responsibility. But there is also uh, the, the, the wrong idea, which I see across the continent, that the schooled African, the one who's been all over the world, is the person with solutions. I disagree. Mm -hmm. I disagree totally. Mm -hmm. uh, the solutions to our problems, the, the, the challenging of our leaders, which uh, Moses was referring to, is not the privilege of the educated African. Everybody has it's, that. It's absolutely not. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and I think let's not also give too much credit or, or, or put so much in terms of expectations mm -hmm. on the educated African. Mm -hmm. But for sure, we have still a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the issue of the difference between critique and criticizing. Mm -hmm. and, and this brings me to that particular question of whether that criticizing in itself mm -hmm. is already part of the solution to these problems when it comes to governance. If my work will always be to criticize, mm -hmm. uh, am I playing a role in creating a better mm -hmm. governance system? Mm -hmm. And if I'm just criticizing, not critiquing, as mm -hmm. you said, am I still playing my role, Moses? Yeah, I think, uh, <coughs> I think it, it can go either way. Mm -hmm. You can, criti critiquing can be a contribution as well. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes uh, people, uh, people in leadership, sometimes really they are, they are really focused on, on, on their visions, on what they want to achieve. And people on the side really see some of these, these, these gaps. Sure. That and, then sure. and, then, and, then, and then I think intellectuals have really stood not, I'm not talking about necessarily the educated, but even the, 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 the people on the local level, on the, on the grassroots. They've come out to, you know, to critique some of the things. And uh, unfortunately, so I don't know, I don't know, there's something about, about politics that really puts you in a position of defending mm. yourself. Mm. And uh, before you even listen to the whole conversation, mm. you're already on the defensive, mm. which is really um, a culture that really needs to to, to change if, if really mm -hmm. we want to bring intellectuals mm -hmm. or even other contributors mm -hmm. to, to the betterment of, of Africa mm -hmm. because they really have they're on the ground they're seeing all these things and you maybe somehow you, you have a lot on your table and you're focusing on, on what you want to achieve for the people mm -hmm. just to so clarify mm -hmm. just to clarify when you mentioned th that difference which one which one should work well for, for Africa and particularly for Rwanda critiquing or criticizing I think critiquing. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's important to criticize, mm -hmm. to criticize. Mm -hmm. But as a Rwandan, uh, because that's my starting point, yes. mm -hmm. I also feel that when I criticize, I should point to a way out. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if my job is to just say this is not working and that is not working, and I, at least I should say, if I were in the place of this leader or this person, I would, I would look also way. at mm. this and that and that. Mm. You know, that's, that's really very important. Mm -hmm. That's why I insisted from the beginning on the sense of responsibility. Mm. And I feel that we, each one of us, the 11.3 million Rwandans, mm. have a responsibility. Mm. Uh, some countries um, have a different trajectory. Some countries could use with no contribution from their elite or, or their media, they, you know. But we, we are the product of our history and we are mm. the product of the, s you know, we are the sum total of the experience of this country, good and bad. Mm. Uh, so my, my particular mm. point of view is that we cannot be indifferent uh, or we cannot just um, notice, mm. we cannot just point to we should go an extra step and say, this, I think, could be done in, in a certain way, way to, mm -hmm. to, to, to make it work. But on the point of uh, politicians uh, and, and leaders uh, uh, being defensive, I think there is some truth to that. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some truth to that. Um, when, when, when dialogue is not there, mm -hmm. when I don't value uh, your views, even views that are against what I'm doing, mm -hmm then you know that's where the defensiveness comes from uh, but there is merit in listening uh, mm. even when people are not saying anything particularly useful mm. as as leaders as mm. public figures um, we must listen and i think that is 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 part of what's been happening mm. in this country mm. uh, but i you know again uh, i don't want to throw uh, flowers uh, on on 
on, on uh, this country as, as, as a, a particular country. We have some work to do. Mm -hmm. But I can say as, as part of the leadership of this country, that we will pay attention to what you say, even when we don't like it. Mm -hmm. You just and that's part particularly yes. when yes, you don't yes, like yes. it. Particularly so when you don't like it. Uh, let's no, no, but, here. but I think I would disagree a little bit with the minister. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to throw flowers on ourselves. But I'll explain. Mm -hmm. I'll throw the flowers not only on Rwanda, but on Botswana, yeah. uh, on Ethiopia, yeah. uh, on Cape Verde, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. Mauritius. The people, the, the countries that are doing things. Mm -hmm. Now, but when I was talking about th um, wh how good we are doing, I was actually not uh, putting it in the context of the elites. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are going to have an elite, and they are going to change the society, mm. it will their success will be insofar as the context of that country. Mm. Now, if the top leadership has not put in place the enabling environment mm. for the elite to mm. contribute mm. towards that change. Mm. If the top leadership is being infested by tribalism mm. and all the negative traits that define most of the continent, mm. then you are going to have problems. You are not going to have an elite that's going to meaningfully contribute, mm. and you are going to have an elite that becomes quickly jaded, mm -hmm. uh, cynical, and, go and joining the, 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 the uh, you know, j joining the indifference and, and eating and so on and so forth. Mm. So in that context, I think we've been doing good. Uh, of course, we can talk about Ethiopia with the advances it's making. Mm. We can talk about Botswana with the very fact that they don't allow their resources to be exploited by any multinational. They will be making sure that things are working for their people. And that comes mm. very much from the elite. I will have to agree, though, uh, with the minister. Um, the, the solutions are not going to come strictly from the top. Mm -hmm. They are not go going to come strictly from the educated, mm -hmm. the elite as we know them. Mm -hmm. By the way, I hope that when we are talking about the elite, we're not talking only about the people who've come from the diaspora or, or who've gone to school in foreign countries and come back with their degrees. I think we are talking about people who are professionals yes. in their own country, yes. Yes. who've gone to the local universities, and who've and acquired and working role, experience, and so on and so forth, the lawyers issues. and, yes. and the journalists and so on, and those yes. are the elite. Yes. And yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Believe me, they are not going to work very well in any environment where the top is not doing very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Super. We're going to take a very short break. Just hold that thought mm -hmm. particularly. And when we come back, we move the conversation even forward. We're talking about the issues of those who are, you know, bright enough. And of course, on top of the cream of the continent. If you're talking about education, if you're talking about the job that you have, if you're talking about the money, if you're talking about the expertise, are you playing any role specifically to sort out the problems in your country specific? And of course, the continent is large. And of course, this is what we're looking at in this particular program today. We're asking ourselves, have the elite in the continent, and of course, even in your country where you are, have they taken a back seat on national issues, mm -hmm. on continental issues? Do they contribute in saying, this is the direction we need to take in fighting poverty? This is the direction we need to take in fighting corruption? This is the direction we need to take in fighting conflicts in our countries? These are the key issues that we're talking about right here on the program. Mm -hmm. Be part of the conversation. All you need to do is tweet at debate411. You can use the hashtag debate411, or you can tweet me directly at amugene. And now we're taking a very short break. We'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Nakumati, Kesiti, na Nakumati, Kigali City Tower. Maze, Ujo Hirganigan, Kadivichiro, Ringana, Namrongtan Kujana, Kumai Sume Ugoko, Butandu Kanye, Koresha, I am a Hirgue, who have Gita Piwiti Emo, Kritime Chakabri, Chayo Rigishure, Ihute, Nutangue. Amate de Konama Giriza, Birakuri Chiswa. Who here checks the time when we start? You need it. We got it. So, so, so Natasha, are we, are we cornering our people? <laughs> are we being unfair to them? At the end of the day, Fiona also mentions that the yeah. more you show them this condom, the more you're opening up their minds yeah. to having sex. But do you feel well represented? Do you think the media issues are well taken to the table when it comes to advocacy? How do we convince them and say that we shut it down because you exceeded the limit? The word conservation looks just complicated, but how do we simplify this? What role do our schools play then? And the people around our children, what role can they play in order to avoid these children becoming a menace in the society? Yes. Caroline, you just want to sound moral, but you're I... just not accepting the reality on the ground. Well, I want to sound moral and encourage it and practice it.
is an EA. Shop at Nakmat UTC and Nakmat Kigali City Tower and enjoy 50% discounts on home living face towels, bath towels, and hand towels. Grab this great opportunity and get yourself selected. You're now okay with the time. Price. Hurry, hurry. Are you okay hurry, with time, Emma? While stocks last. All right, thank Terms you and so conditions much. apply. Nakumat, you need it. We've got it. Okay, put the water down. Thank you. All right, we're going back. Thank you so much for still being with us right here on the program. It is called Debate 411. And of course, the hashtag to use is Debate 411. We're talking about the issue of the role of African elites in shaping the continent. And of course, even the individual countries. And let's now talk about the issues uh, specific in the different countries that we already know of in terms of the uh, challenges there and what role these uh, people who are learned, those with the money, those with the influence, can play in solving those issues. We are honored here with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, yes, Luis Mushikiwawo. Thank you for being on the yes, program. Sir. Shaka Kanuma and, of course, Thierry Gatete and Moses uh, of the East African. Now, let's now go specifically to the issues that probably all of us know about what affects mm. different African countries without just painting the whole mm. continent black mm. Mm. And, and be specific. We have the issue of corruption, for example. Mm. Uh, where there's a debate even in Kenya on, on, on the level of corruption and all that, uh, we have an issue of leadership as mm. well. Mm. And in most cases, most people say we want leaders who are learned. We want mm. leaders who are well knowledgeable, those who have gone to school, those mm. who can influence change and all that. Mm. But most of the time, the elite, those ones who we are talking about, are the ones who are voting on Twitter. Mm. Mm. They are the ones who are voting on Facebook. Mm. But when elections come, these people don't take part in these elections. Mm. It is the Baturages who go there and pick these leaders. Mm. So how can we convince these people and ensure that they take a central role in developing their individual countries and the continent alike? There is no excuse whatsoever for anybody to stay out of political processes. Mm -hmm. uh, if we do so, then we should not be uh, complaining about mm. getting the wrong leaders and, and not... Um, being satisfied uh, as citizens and and you know at the risk of sounding very redundant the key word is responsibility mm -hmm. and responsibility means you need to go out proactively and do that which will bring you the kind of result uh, that you want sometimes it doesn't work you know because uh, let's face it uh, they're bad leaders I I it's a fact but to sit back and not vote you know, be cynical, think that you cannot change anything. Um, at least in this country, we know that we have had to take extremely difficult uh, decisions. We've learned many lessons along the way, but we haven't been sitting back. So for me, you know, sitting back, uh, uh, being on Twitter and, and Facebook and all that, but not being out there um, in our districts voting on election day, um, that automatically excludes, if I do so, that automatically excludes me from coming out and complaining because I haven't exercised mm -hmm. that right and, and exercised, taken that responsibility, which is bound to give me the kind of uh, leadership that I want. Mm -hmm. But let me make a very important point in my view. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I'm saying this from my own perspective as... Um, you know, partly Western educated uh, Rwandan, there's a feeling out there uh, with many of us that it is not uh, politically correct. Mm -hmm. It's not sexy to say nice things about your country and your government. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of have to, you know, some people wrongly call it neutral. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you kind of have Balance. to reserve mm. some negativity towards your own so that you look you know, like a smart, uh, mm -hmm. worldly, educated person. That's an issue to be addressed. Mm -hmm. I, I disagree with that. How do we address that? What would be the proper m way of going about that then? There's a very uh, a good word uh, in Kinyarwanda uh, called bangamngabo. Those who dislike their own. Not those who criticize their own. Mm. Uh, because criticism is, is important. It's a good ingredient for change. Mm. But, you know, I, and I, I'm not sure who to blame, but I'll begin by ourselves. 
Um, I will also blame the systems uh, that we evolve in away from mm. our countries, mm. where it's partly is the education, uh, which you know relegates Africa to a certain level. That's just a fact. It's it's the television um, uh, channels mm. we watch, where you know most Africans we see are, are you know dirty kids in, in a swamp with uh, protruding bellies and flies all over their faces. It's the idea that African leaders are, are brutal and they're corrupt. Um, I, I'm, I'm going the extreme of the extreme, uh, but that is part of the, f the, the reality we face. As a continent being depicted a certain way, it's not so much your curriculum in school, it's that environment that tells you, mm, Africa is a different place. And I it's don't want to be associated with Absolutely. It's also the lifestyle. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we, we have now in the world uh, a certain group of people who think we should think like they think. We should dress as they dress. We should have the same lifestyle uh, as, as them. Mm -hmm. What kind of world <laughs> is this? Uh, diversity is what makes the world mm. uh, interesting. But that particular depiction of Africa is something we need to be resolute about mm. and say, look, corruption is not an African word. Yes, there is corruption, and this is where it is. It's not the whole continent. It's there, and it needs to be fought objectively. But I can point to many non-African leaders who are extremely corrupt. Mm -hmm. I can point to companies um, in the West that are seriously corrupt. I can even point to countries that have laundered, that have cleaned up and legalized, legalized corruption. So it, it, it's this balance. I'm not claiming a clean, uh, you know, all is good Africa. I'm just claiming an Africa that is not very different from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And that is primarily the job of those who have access to uh, Facebook and Twitter and television like, like we do. To tell it. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, this story. Yeah. Very important mm. a point that, that, that the minister brings here. But the fact is that we even have most of those who, after getting this education, mm. they decide to leave the continent. Yes. Because they're going to look for greener pastures mm. elsewhere and we don't have mm. them right here. Yeah. Uh, let's talk yeah, a bit yeah, about you're that. You're right about that. because uh, I was reading and uh, Walsa Inka, one of the African intellectuals, said that what, what Africa is facing right now is, the, is that problem of brain drain, where people, we've, ex, we've, we've exported a lot, of, a lot of intellectuals who would have contributed a lot to the development Could of the Could it continent. be because of those uh, descriptions that the minister mentioned, that uh, the continent, you know, we, we're just a troubled continent, and so why should I have all this education and still be in this particular area of the world? I'd okay. rather go out there... And, and, and look for a living. Yeah, part of it is, of course, where Africa is coming from. You know, poverty and, and all those, those other, you know, political issues, instabilities, which have pushed people out. Some go for, you know, to, 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 ach to, to, to attain education, good education, which they can use back here. But then along the way, things change. But what I want to contribute about is I want to disagree with, the fact with the, this common saying that African intellectuals have not contributed to the development of Africa, actually, even, even in their difficulties, they try. We've seen African uh, elites on this continent who have even, they, they've, gone, they've gone beyond ideas. They've really uh, uh, proactively engaged in these issues. Uh, for example, um, Mo Ibrahim. Mo Ibrahim is, is an African and is an African intellectual. But he saw that good governance is an issue that really needs to be, uh, to be worked on in Africa, need to be, to be um, uh, put on the right footing. And he, 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 he put a fund to, you know, like an incentive to African leaders who, who want to overstay in power. And it's like, whoever, d whoever steps out peacefully, this is for you. So you can see some of these efforts which come out. There's another. So some people have said there's this another. Is, this, one. Is, this is corruption. You want me to go so that I get this particular <laughs> money? There's <laughs> probably <laughs> before you come in, you'll be coming in, and of course also mm. Shaka. But let's also mm. clear the air on this one mm. because when you talk of contributions, mm. you've cited an example. But is this the direction you want the African elite to take? Let me just say that um, I know Mo Ibrahim very well. Uh, mm. I think he's. Uh, He's a, a smart African. He, he, he's uh, very knowledgeable about the world. 
But I fundamentally disagree with two things. One is the idea that um, African leaders have to be bribed to, to, leave to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that, to me, I is wrong. Mm -hmm. um, uh, two, uh, the, the, the governance index and, and all that, uh, you know, we've been observing indices and, you know, classifying countries and all that. There's a lot of politics behind that, uh, which I don't want to get into now. But for me, the idea that, you know, I, as an enlightened African who is watching my continent, um, I am going to put money aside, so I bribe these uh, otherwise... Uh, corrupt uh, leaders to, to, to actually do the right thing. You know, we should be doing the right thing for us. Mm -hmm. We should not be doing the right thing to get $5 million. Mm -hmm. We should not be doing the right thing to please somebody out of London or, or, or Washington or, no. Maybe th that's, that's, that's one of those statements where they say desperate moments calling for desperate actions. Mm -hmm. That, that we have to get to that point mm. to, 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 to make sure that our leaders do the right thing, uh, bribe them. But you see, that's negative incentive. Mm -hmm. That's negative incentive. Uh, I, I think, for one thing, this is a contribution mm. to this idea of, you know, Africans are either victims or brutes. Mm -hmm. No. There are many, the majority of Africans are in between. Those are extremes. Mm -hmm. And these extremes exist. I am in, in no way... Uh, denying some of the serious dysfunctions we have on the continent. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, we are just like anybody else. Conflict, there is yes. conflict all over the world today. Uh, bad leaders, there are bad leaders everywhere. Great leaders, there are great leaders in every part of the world. Not to mention that we have, we, the continent of Africa, have been dealing and we continue to deal with the baggage of history a history that is not of our own making, a history that has been meddled into, a history that you know, uh, calls for a sense of responsibility from parts other than Africa. So I, I'm just saying Africa is not some strange beast that came from you know, some strange planet. We are a continent, one, with a difficult history, that has been contributed to by all these other countries that have never taken responsibility for the consequences of that history. We, we have excellent people. We have uh, problems. But where is there no problem in the world today? That said, because I'm African and because primarily I want my continent to do well and to do better than, than many others, I also recognize that we have serious challenges, we have dysfunctions, um, and we're not doing the right thing mm -hmm. necessarily. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, it's just a question of we're not different. Yes. We, we, we have the same issues that others have. We haven't been good at resolving some of these issues. But you know, let's not forget the, the little meddling that it's always you know, under the rug somewhere on, on the continent. Mm. We take responsibility, but others should also take responsibility for what's happening on the continent today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gatete. So the sad reality is that you know, even with the good <coughs> that we have, mostly the bad is what is o overshadowing the good that we have in the continent. And the role of the elite, those who are informed from the continent, is to actually clear the air on these issues, and we are not doing that. Just let me come back to the idea that intellectuals and educated. Do you know, Eugene, when before the Bible and the Quran and all these books, they were not read by everyone. Mm -hmm. There were people who would read them, then go explain. Let's hit the nail on the head, get it. Yeah, give me. I, I want to develop this. Yes, I've been thinking. So this education that the African elite receives. Which school do they go to? Do they go to the school of life? They go to <laughs> a particular school. And that mm -hmm. school, that information you get there, mm -hmm. this, it's so misleading if you are not w well prepared mm -hmm. that actually it's not true that the African intellectual people are actually smart or clever or intelligent. Mm -hmm. First of all, they are educated from a colonial education system. Now, to be able to understand how useful that knowledge that you acquire can apply to your continent, mm. 
is a completely different dimension of education. Maybe, in my opinion, maybe we should have everyone who, after they graduate from their PhDs in Western education, maybe we should put them through Ingando and education, Pan-African education, that makes them understand that this, all these things that I've been listening to, Latin, law, and whatever, how do I actually mm -hmm. Apply it. Because most of the I African agree. educated I intellectuals agree. are actually useless for peculiar African problems. And that's the tragedy because they are the ones who are given the platform. They are imagined, they tell you that they're intellectual, that they're intelligent. Most of them are imposters, Eugene. Now, <laughs> the, 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 the problem uh, is that Good one. The, so the education is actually not appropriate mm -hmm. to respond to my grandmother's mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to come back, which brings us to the idea of critiquing and criticizing. Criticizing is fine if your democracy is 200 years and your, your development is at the level where people are not hungry, people are not, all, everyone is educated, everyone has basic needs. Mm -hmm. You can sit, politics is operated on television in, in the West, mm -hmm. and rightfully so. I mean, b b on the understanding that everyone has a television and electricity to watch that television. Now, if you do politics on the television for someone who hasn't actually eaten, ha doesn't have, he won't even watch it. Mm. So, so, so the re only reason people criticize is because they haven't understood, actually, why am I doing even this? That's what he learned in his school of journalism or of law or of human rights, that f to be a good human rights activist, I went to the school of human rights. I was told you have to criticize these things, you have to criti but they haven't understood. To what end am I doing this? Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, people, all this has to stem from a particular problem. The reason African leaders insist that you have to critique, come up with solutions, is because we are playing catch up. There's just not enough time, mm -hmm. not enough resources to take time. To we just so they to want you to be part of you the have solution. To, we have no time. Yes. We know problems are there. Yes. Everyone knows they're there. But we just want solutions now because yes. there's no time, there's no time. To, yeah. to deal with, with re repeating the problem. Yeah. Why? Because it is the world that we inherit today. So I just want to come back to one more thing. Very quickly because we are we yeah. we're out of time. It's, it's one of the things that we have to blame our leaders about is the investment into media and communication. It's very new. And we were talking about the, so when we talk about the discourse of the world today and the reason African intellectuals have mm -hmm. to say bad things about Africa is because they have to fit into a narrative right. which uh, a Kenyan uh, author calls the, 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 the victim, savage, savior metaphor of mm -hmm. human rights. So African population are victims, African leaders are savages, and they, the saviors, come with, the, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a metaphor mm. that, that, that exists, that has been set by Western media. Now, it can only be ans offset mm. by African media. Otherwise, it will continue to be that discourse. Mm. If you don't say Africans are victims, and for you to, be, to not be a savage, you have to be closer to the savior, which is the West. Do you understand? Yes. So it stems uh, from all there, yes. Eugene. I will allow so you I to, think to, to, to continue to land, on, on to this. To land one thing? Uh, yes. Just one, one more point. Yes. I really think everyone who is educated in the West needs actual education to tell them now. For us to, to harness, be to harness all your information, you have to do this. Yes. You have, you have, this is how we can use it. Yes. But, but, but sadly, yes. We, we all feel like going to be educated out there is yeah. the, the end thing. Mm -hmm. This is what most of these children and some of the parents wish for. Mm -hmm. We look for scholarships yes. to go there. Yeah. But, but he's saying, no, 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 you have to come back here for, for re-schooling. Uh, no, it, it will not happen. V very quickly, uh, yes. But, but, uh, well, I'll, I'll really go off on a tangent. Yes. Uh, look, we shouldn't be sitting here thinking that there is a, a particular elite that is going to solve Africa's problems. It begins with myself. It begins with you. And how do we go about it in Africa? I'm afraid we, the elite, have miserably failed, where others have, uh, have succeeded. Why? Because we in Africa, the elite, the educated, the salaried, the people who have money, enjoy too much going shopping, mm -hmm. enjoy too much uh, you know, luxury brands and not buying from their own manufacturers, and I'm guilty, uh, enjoy too much 
the, the easy way out going to the swimming pool on Sunday, you know, being the elitist that Gatete was talking about. Mm -hmm. We just don't do enough as a society, especially as the elite who should know better. You know, l go to the West, and um, I hate to point this out, but there's the things they do. You will find college kids, people who are pampered in their own societies, and she or he is on the street handing out flyers for a cause he or she believes in that will change. You will find them, uh, you know, talking about orphans, saying, look, we have orphans in, in, in a particular area, what's going on? And this kid is not going to the TV to watch the English premiership mm -hmm. or, or whatever else is going on. This kid will be on the street handing out flyers, volunteering, putting in time to actually, putting in time, that is very important, putting in the effort. That is standing in the cold, and you know, and and you'll be very surprised that, that that very kid or that very person or that very mother who is sitting out there is very wealthy. They are they are living in an apartment in New York City. But they've be decided to, to to volunteer. They are, doing, they are mm. putting in the time <coughs> yes. while we are content to to enjoy the good things of life. And then when things are not working, we are criticizing. We're, we're complaining yeah, yeah. as we close, let Madam let Minister. Yes. Before we close, yes. Let me just. Uh, uh, be fair to the West, uh, so to speak. Ideally, what, what should happen to us who have tasted both worlds is to pick what's good in the West yes. and bring it and apply it here. Uh, learn from some of the good practices. Uh, learn from just the enrichment we get from contact with, with uh, other cultures and civilizations. So the idea is not to reject no. Just because it's the West. Yes. There are many, many. I have received a very good uh, education in the United States of America. When I come here to Rwanda, some of the good things I've seen in America, I'm not applying them uh, to my country. That's really part of the problem also. Y you know, um, I come back to the continent. I've seen good working methods. I've seen professional standards. I've seen kindness I've seen you know very bright I've had very bright uh, teachers and so forth when I come here I should be picking the good things that I've seen push aside some of the bad things because they are and try to apply them for my own benefit in my own country but that's not always the case uh, some people cynically say that you know you you get back home and you are localized mm -hmm. which is a negative thing which I don't like but it is the reality that... So should that we localize them as yeah, a the, the good practices, we need to bring them here. Yeah. We need to actually proactively go out there to Asia, to America, to Europe, to the Arab world, yes. and carefully look for those good things and come and plant them uh, in our own garden here. S so, I, I mean, for the sake of debate, it's, it's good to, to go a, a bit extreme, a bit like a tete. Super. Uh, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. but, but um, Eugene, uh, let me say that uh, I have a lot of faith in, in, in young people uh, in, on this continent. I have a lot of faith in, in, in the young people uh, uh, in this country. I never thought, I grew up, I was born and I grew up in Kigali here. I've never thought I could see top fashion uh, talent in Rwanda. I never thought I could see painting. Painting is not something that you know, is, is part of Rwanda. But you look at some of these young artists in Kigali. Look at music in, in this country. So uh, the, the youth of the continent is inspired. So they need all of us to kind of push, push that momentum yeah. and tell them that they're doing well. And tell them, look, use all that talent, whether it's art or science, use it to advance your continent keep open to the world because we're not an island and bring that to, 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 your, to your own uh, situation. So I'm not, I'm not a, a, an Afro-pessimist. I just think we're a bit lazy. Okay. Yeah, Super. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. We are out of time, literally. <laughs> Sorry, my friend. But after this conversation, it always continues. Oh, man. And we always continue these conversations mm. online on Twitter at Debate411. Mm. Hashtag is Debate411. Mm -hmm. We'll keep this going on. Thank you so very much for definitely being part of this particular program. We thank you so much for the tweets. Keep them coming at Debate411. Hashtag Debate411. Or you can tweet me directly at I'm Eugene Anangwe. Let's keep this kind of conversations even more and more because we really need them. When we come back next week, we'll be definitely looking at another topic right here. If you're learned, if you're educated, if you have the money, if you have the influence, ask yourself this very good question. What are you doing with that? 
to change the situation in your environment. We'll see you again next time. My name as always is Eugene Anangwe. Goodbye.